Ah, hey guys, welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and man, the sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, we've wrapped up one of the graffiti word projects, and we're on to the second, guys, and as promised, we're going to do this one a little differently, and I know you graffiti heads are going to again be like, this isn't graffiti, <laughs> it's a style, guys. As I'm making a living here, guys, I still need to do this in a cost-effective manner. So, yes, it's great to just kind of fill in the lines, but I need this to be in a certain area on the saddlebag. And in order to do so, guys, we're stenciling today. So, it's just another way to do lettering. It's going to be graffiti style, but lettering all the same. Oh, the pooch. Come on in. He's out there looking at me like, how dare you? How dare you leave me out in the sunshine like it's not a beautiful day. Oh, you're warm. All right, guys, so with that being said, I'm gonna flip you guys around. We're gonna quickly cut some stencils and get into this, guys. Should be a quick one. All right, man. Check it out. Alright guys, so here is the reference that I drew up for the client, plus some little uh, reminders on the colors that we're going to paint this bad boy. Um, this is the symbol in India for Om, Om. and Bana. Om Bana is the Indian deity devoted to motorcycles. Who knew man, but if you get right down to it. They've got a deity for damn near everything, hey dude. And um, this is what was requested. So this is what I designed, guys. So with that being said, I want this big, pretty darn big. So I had to get two copies. I'm gonna sandwich them together here to get that A finished off. And then I'm gonna cut out an outline. I'm gonna cut out just the base letters and I'm gonna cut out the three dimensions and that's gonna give me areas to spray to get this mapped out in a uber quick fashion guys and uh, I can make some cash <laughs> who doesn't love cash I love cash let's get to it and you got da 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 <laughs> juggling papers here well, all right guys so Stencil number one is my outline of my lettering. All right, guys, I am going to have this pinstripe scallop in behind. I'm going to have that kind of coming over top of the back of my uh, second N. So I've mapped it out. And now it's just a matter of figuring out where we're going to have that line protruding over top. And I think right there ought to do. All right, guys, I grabbed myself a brand new X-Acto blade and keeping in mind that I am cutting through the paper, the masking tape and the pinstripe tape, guys, I am applying an even pressure, but not so much that I'm cutting through the paint. All right, guys, um, I don't have access to the trunk on this because it's locked. So I'll just be grabbing tape, flipping it over, rolling it upon itself and just putting little tabs here and there to stick this down. Just like you're gonna see right here. So you see there's about 10 or so little tabs. And as I stick her down, there's gonna be little areas that are still gonna wanna lift up a little bit. So just grab yourself some more tape, tear it off into little tiny wedges and just Spin them around on top of each other so that you've got a sticky surface that you can adhere to the back of your paper, guys. And with that being said, Banna Yellow. <laughs> Banana? Yeah, I know, I know. It's Primrose Yellow, but I tell you guys, I'm going to tweak this color just a shade or two more banana, and I'm going to contact one shot. I don't know who I got to talk to over there, but we're going to do it, man. We're going to have a bloodshot banana yellow. It's going to happen. 
Mark my words. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm just blasting her in here. Um, when I'm applying paint with a stencil that stuck down with uh, some tape in behind it, I'm a little less uh, cautious about the stencil lifting and moving, so I can kind of just, just spray away, guys. Um, I'll, however, I do make sure that I'm spraying directly at that stencil. I try not to get any harsh angles so that my air from my airbrush doesn't blow underneath and create some uh, overspray underneath. Underspray? I don't know what you would call that, but either way guys, mixing in a little bit of green into my yellow to get, uh, I should say some yellow into my green to get just more of a lighter uh, lime green just to get some uh, different tone variations guys, a little bit of color difference up at the top of the letters here. I don't want this just to be a solid fade. I still want it to have some definition, some little bit of highlights in there to give it kind of a bubble effect. Just the added little kicks, guys, that make it a little more appealing to the eyes. Give the eye something to feast on. All right, guys, once I wrap up with the rest of this yellow, what should be right away here, I'm going to mix in a bit of orange and start working our way down on these letters. Eventually, we're going to get all the way down to red. And I don't know why I just told you that when I'm, you're going to watch it anyways. <laughs> I can just imagine all the eager little beavers that just fast forward right over the orange and went straight to the red. Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> all right, guys. For the rest of you who are actually here to learn something, well, here is some real time for you guys. So this is the moments where you pay attention to the way the finger is moving. Pay attention to the way the wrist is locked. Both wrists are locked and it's more of a shoulder movement when I'm spraying my paint here, guys, especially when I'm trying to get a straight line. <laughs> and as you're practicing, you will know that one of the hardest things to do with an airbrush is to get a straight line. Why? Well, it's because you're floating above your surface with paintbrushes, with pens, with pencils. You know, you're typically pressing down on that surface, rubbing right up against it, and that surface is working as a stabilizer for your pen, pencil, paintbrush. Um, paintbrushes are a little bit, you know, on the borderline because, again, you do kind of have to float above the surface to keep that paintbrush from expanding into a fan. But guys, with the airbrush, you are like hover mode like 80% of the time. You will notice, ah, Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, you will notice I do tend to brace myself. I will sometimes use my pinky. I will sometimes use my knuckles of the hand that I use to stabilize. Not my trigger finger, but the other one. And as promised, guys, here is some orange. I'm not sure why I got so excited for a minute there, but ah, here we are. <laughs> orange, orange, orange. All right, guys. Um, you'll notice where I'm placing the orange on some of these letters, it's not an even fade going throughout. Each letter has its own individual fade, and this will become more apparent as we add more color. Red. Alright, Eager Beavers, we've caught up with you, and now if you want to learn something too, here we are with a little bit more real time for you guys, so you can kind of see how I lay the colors on. It's a slow process. I'm not trying to do this very quickly. Even with my stencil in place, I am still putting the color in pretty slow. Light layers, try to build it up so it doesn't get too wet. Um, one thing you'll notice working with stencil, guys, if your paint gets too wet, it will start to skate and bleed underneath, creating a bit of a mess, man, like a hazmat situation underneath that stencil. And uh, in a lot of cases, you're just blasting along, getting your paint on there. You have no idea. You think everything's all groovy, and then you peel it up, and you're like, no, and the paint's already dried, and oh, man, it's not fun. So light passes, guys. Build it up slowly. This is kind of my motto, but it should be everybody's motto who is going to take up the airbrush and get into the game of floss. Slinging paint through one of these bad boys. I've said it before, guys, and I will reiterate, it is not a race, or if it is, guys, you want to be the tortoise, all right? We are not in it to be quick. We are not in it to do speed. 
we are in it for results and time is your friend I can't stress it more guys don't beat yourself up if it's taking longer than you thought this is my world every project I take on takes longer than I thought guys and that's fine I'm okay with that I uh, actually kind of enjoy it because it does let me know that I am putting in not just a hundred percent guys not even a hundred and ten percent guys in a lot of cases I am exceeding the limits by at least 13 percent um, here we go guys we're just wrapping up the rest of the reds again doing some definition doing some of these straight lines a little bit of graffiti effects with some little dots and uh, just make sure the blend is nice so nice I ain't gotta do it twice and next I'm going in with some pink so just getting some highlights to that red bringing it away from being just a flat surface guys and giving it some dimensions you know me guys I'm all about 3d in whatever case I can get it and with these letters it just means bubbling it out with some highlights going in with some yellow into the middle of these letters guys got to make sure that they are included with the three dimensions and with that being said i think we're pretty close here guys just pump pump them pumping up some highlights pump pump the giant all right i don't know that <laughs> and we're gonna peel this off carefully um in case you need to stick back down again and uh pop off a little tab of tape and we are on to the border all right guys i'm going to blast this in with blue um time lapse i know i know it looks like i'm just literally spray bombing this stuff on but believe me these are multiple multiple passes over you know a good let's say three minutes i know this is taking like two um, noticed a little hair there, picked it out with my X-Acto knife, and now I got my trusty business card, guys. Nice little straight edge stencil. Easy to hold in the hand and easy to manipulate when you're working around a project like this. So, I am just going in with the added shadows to give some... <laughs> I feel like I've said dimension a lot in this video, but I guess when you're talking about three dimensions, you have to mention the... Three dimensions, all right, uh, four? Four dimensions? I don't know, some people think there's 11. <laughs> you should check that out, it's quite interesting. And with uh, these little lighter guys mapped out, I'm gonna go in with a bit darker of a blue to add some uh, my tones into my shadow areas, just to make sure that it does look like some of these areas are going further away. And here's a little trick, guys. Two, two stencils in one. All right, if you need to do a corner and it's uh, kind of an off corner, not a right angle, well, that's what I do, guys. Just uh, two quick straight edges, butt them up once again another, get yourself your corner, and ba bam All right, um, I think we're pretty close to getting all the 3D shadows mapped out. Now I'm just doing some uh, sort of fade effects, so as I'm pulling down the stencil, I'm adding paint, and it's giving me a series of lines. I know you can't see it. <laughs> I know my little telephone setup here does not give me the image quality for you to see it, but I'm telling you, and you can take my word for it, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're done with the blue. We're going to peel off this bad boy. Nope. Nope, not quite. A couple more lines. Yeah! Who's Speedy Gonzales now? Relax, Ryan. It's not a race. Chill. Breathe. <laughs> Alright, guys. I know we gotta be getting close. I know. I see. I knew it. I knew it. And there you go. Rock on. You rock on. <laughs> Alright. Woohoo. What do you guys think? Opinions? Ah, ha, ha. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think she's looking magnificent. And some of you graffiti heads are probably like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, that makes life a lot easier. 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out. <laughs> All right, guys. So I don't have the proper paintbrush to get onto the own part of this project. So I'm going to whip out to the good old dollar store 
and grab myself one, and we will get back to it. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this little ditty. Call that as a wrap. And guys, stay tuned for part two. We're going to wrap this up in two parts, guys. Um, and as always, guys, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. All right, and all you graffiti heads, you stay tuned for part five of this graffiti project where I tackle this like I would have if I was doing a wall, which I've never done in my life. I've never done in my life. All right, guys, stay tuned. Cheers.